Your body can turn a sweet potato into four hours of steady energy, but a soda crashes you in 30 minutes, even though both are technically carbs. So why does everyone lump sugar and carbs together like they're the same thing? Your body treats them like completely different fuels. Today, I'll explain sugar versus carbs like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand which one sabotages your energy. You'll know when cutting each one helps and why blaming all carbs is misleading. It's like canceling your entire streaming service because one show disappointed you. Here's what everyone gets wrong about sugar and carbs. They use sugar and carbs interchangeably, like they're synonyms, but they're not even the same category. Sugar is one specific thing, a simple carbohydrate your body burns instantly. Fast, hot, bright flame, then it's gone in seconds and you're left wondering why you feel terrible. Carbs are the entire category that includes that quick burning match, but also slow burning fuel that keeps you going for hours. Plus, it includes fiber that your body can't even digest but still needs. It's like calling every vehicle a sports car, when some are built for speed, some are trucks built for heavy loads, and some are bicycles. Technically all vehicles, but they do wildly different things. Think of carbs like a toolbox full of different tools. Inside that box, you've got sugar, the tiny screwdriver that's only good for one quick job. Your body uses it immediately, and then it's over. That's why candy or juice spikes your energy in 60 seconds, makes you feel invincible, then drops you so hard you need a nap. But the toolbox also contains complex carbs, longer chains of molecules that take serious time to break apart. Pasta, rice, bread, potatoes, and oats are all complex carbs. Your body has to work for those, which means they release energy slowly instead of all at once. Then there's fiber, which is technically a carb, but your body can't digest it. It just sits there, slowing everything down, which keeps you from burning through fuel too fast and crashing. So when someone says carbs are bad, they're blaming the whole toolbox for what the tiny screwdriver does. The real troublemaker is added sugar and refined carbs. White bread, soda, candy, pastries, that muffin at Starbucks pretending to be breakfast. These hit your bloodstream so fast, your body goes into panic mode. Your pancreas dumps insulin, trying to get all that sugar out of your blood before it causes damage. And where does it go after that gets processed? Straight into fat storage. Because your body figures, if you're eating like this, you must be preparing for famine. Meanwhile, you crash hard 20 minutes later, get hungry again, and the cycle repeats like a subscription you forgot to cancel. But oats, sweet potatoes, lentils, and black beans? Those are the slow-burning logs that keep you going. They release energy gradually, keep you full for hours, and don't spike your blood sugar. Your body handles them completely differently because it has time to process them properly instead of scrambling like a restaurant during dinner rush. This is why you can eat a bowl of oatmeal with nuts and feel satisfied until lunch, but a glazed donut leaves you hunting for snacks by mid-morning. Now here's where it gets interesting with timing and context. Your body doesn't just react to what you eat, it reacts to how you eat it and what you do afterward. Imagine you eat a plain bagel on an empty stomach, then sit at your desk for three hours answering emails. That bagel hits fast, spikes hard, crashes harder. But if you eat that same bagel after a plate of eggs and vegetables, suddenly your body processes it differently. The protein and fiber slow everything down, like speed bumps on a residential street. Or if you eat carbs and then go for a walk or hit the gym, your muscles absorb that glucose before it ever becomes a problem. Same food, totally different outcome. Because context matters more than the internet wants you to believe. This matters because cutting all carbs is like throwing away your entire wardrobe because one shirt didn't fit. You're losing the good stuff along with the garbage. The easiest win is cutting added sugar first from your diet. Soda, candy, sweetened coffee drinks, desserts, those healthy granola bars that have more sugar than a candy bar. You'll feel the difference within days and your energy will level out. You'll stop getting those afternoon crashes where you'd trade your laptop for a nap. Your cravings will calm down because you're not on the blood sugar roller coaster anymore. If you cut added sugar and you're still struggling with energy crashes, then it's time to look at something else. Weight that won't budge or feeling hungry an hour after eating means you should examine refined carb. White bread, white rice, regular pasta, crackers, chips. The stuff that's had all the fiber stripped out. These aren't as bad as pure sugar, but they're not far behind. Swap them for whole grain versions, or just eat more vegetables and protein instead. You don't need to go full keto and start measuring everything you eat. You just need to stop eating like every meal is a dessert party. 
But don't fear carbs as a category, because your brain actually runs on glucose. Your muscles store it so you can actually function like a human instead of a zombie. If you work out, if you have a physical job, if you do anything more active than sitting still, you need carbs. The trick is choosing the right ones and eating them smart. You should pair them with protein or fat to slow absorption down. Eat your vegetables and protein first, then your carbs. It literally changes how your body responds. Move after eating, even if it's just a 15-minute walk. Your body is incredibly adaptable when you give it the right setup instead of just dumping sugar on it. Here's what nobody wants to hear, but everyone needs to understand. The villain isn't carbs, and it's not even sugar, really. It's fast carbs eaten alone in huge portions while sitting still, then wondering why you feel awful. It's eating like every meal is a race, and your prize is exhaustion. It's blaming oatmeal and sweet potatoes for what donuts and soda did. You're not broken, and your body isn't defective either. It's working exactly how it's supposed to. You're just feeding it junk and wondering why it's not performing optimally. Some people thrive cutting sugar but keeping complex carbs. They eat rice and potatoes and fruit and feel amazing. Others feel better going lower carb overall, focusing on protein and vegetables with just a little starch. Some people do great with carbs all day, as long as they're active and pairing them right. There's no universal answer, because bodies are different, activity levels are different, and genetics are different. But almost everyone feels better cutting added sugar and refined carbs, because those are the matches that burn you every time. Here's what actually matters in all of this. Sugar is a fast-burning, simple carb that spikes and crashes you hard. Carbs include sugar, but also complex carbs that release energy slowly, and fiber that slows digestion. Cut added sugar first. You'll notice results within days. If you're still struggling, cut refined carbs next. But don't blame all carbs for what the processed ones do. How you eat them matters just as much as what you eat. Pair them with protein or fiber, eat them after vegetables, or move after meals, and your body handles them completely differently. The real transformation happens when you understand your body isn't the problem. Your choices are. Most people never experiment to find what actually works for their lifestyle and activity level. They just follow whatever diet trend is popular, then wonder why they feel miserable and can't stick with it. The people who succeed are the ones who pay attention to how different foods make them feel, then adjust based on results instead of rules. That means tracking your energy levels after meals, noticing when you crash, and being honest about whether you're actually hungry or just bored. It means recognizing that the donut with 20 grams of sugar affects you differently than the apple with 15. Because one comes with fiber and nutrients, while the other comes with regret. So here's the real question. What's the one carb you thought was healthy that you discovered was actually tanking your energy?